On this adventure with Look Amu, we discover the beautiful missile. We talk you through our passage planning and we complete our first bow and stern tie up in the pouring rain without getting divorced. Stocking up on alcohol in a predominantly Muslim country is not easy. We've got a month or two supplies. Their wine room was kept well out of sight, up a set of stairs and through their back office. Okay. It all felt a little bit dodgy, especially considering they'd only accept cash. Beer on the other hand is more readily available and not frowned upon. It's also taxed a lot less. This is what a month of food looks like. Well, food and drink. We're just doing our next bit of passage planning to take us from Sarong down to Missal, a group of islands that's not dissimilar to Wayag. And so what we're using is Indonesia Cruising, Cruising Guide. Cruising Guide to Indonesia, a pilot's guide to Indonesian waters. We are also using our maps or our charts, being ice sailor, and we're using Overtail to actually then zoom in and get the aerial photograph. The reason we use Overtail, um, because you do need to zoom in then down, download the, the oh, sort of high definition aerial photographs of those areas, is so you can see reefs, because the majority of the reefs are just not on the charts. Case in point, that's what it is on a chart. That's what it is in reality, which is quite different. And most of the charts down there say that the Indonesian charts on our nav system are one nautical mile out, which is... I mean, that's a ridiculous error level. Um, that'll put you on a reef or, or just miss an island altogether. Our friends on Water Horse said, if you don't want to faff around doing stern tie-ups in that sort of... Because this is all super deep, so all sort of 40, 42 metres. So you have to tie up there and there by the side of the boat. It's really deep. So if you do want to faff around and do that, uh, then there are two more islands just like a nautical mile further south than that which I'm just downloading now and that's 10 metres anchorage good holding in sand and coral and stuff. And these two islands here which we've just downloaded and as you can see nice and clear and I'm guessing we're talking about this patch of reef here that looks a bit shallower. This is our water maker install and for some reason so this is the skimmer box that does the pre-filter of all the big stuff out of the water. For some reason, it's draining, the pump is draining that. So we think that uh, there's something blocking this pipe going from the outside. So Jamie's going to see if he can unblock it. So I've just opened it, so now it's in line. So I'll be able to stick something up there from the outside. Yeah, I need to find something I can shove up there. Try and unblock it. Special hanging hang tool. Oh, special hanging tool. Yeah. It's in there. What a flexible young man he is. Oh Jesus. Either young or flexible. Magic tool. I'll go look. So I've just noticed, which I don't think you can see, but this hose is still quite white. This hose here is actually quite dark. And I'm wondering if maybe there's some algae growing on the inside, just enough to slow down the water flow into here. With the inlet now clear and all fasteners tightened to prevent any leaks, we we're back in business. We are leaving today and uh, we're going to head down to Mizzle. Mizzle is meant to be a little bit like Wyak, so it's meant to be really, really beautiful. Uh, and as you can probably tell, uh, I shaved for the first time, I think, in about six months. So, beer was just giving me the shit. So I'm clean shaven and uh, we're heading off. It's probably either we break it up and we do it as two full, very long days, or we might just push her into an overnight and get it tomorrow. Something new every day. 
whether it's like a some sort of marine life or or a jellyfish of some kind, have a look at the anchor. Nice, now we're going to get it off. It's not want to come off. Cruising on down a river, well, it's a channel, but it feels like a river. Um, lots of funky boats going past. It's pretty hot though, not a lot of breeze. We have these rivets that hold the gooseneck of the boom onto the mast and as you can see it's held with some pretty kick-ass bolts which probably could do with a bit of tightening actually, a bit loose. And these rivets. Now we've been having these problems with these rivets which could have just been popping out again. So what we're going to do is we've got new big rivets that will fit in there. We didn't have the right size rivets, which we managed to source when we were in Australia. And we thought our larger rivet gun would be sufficient, but of course they didn't fit. But thanks to my mate Jimmy, James that is, he uh, got us a bigger rivet gun um, and then uh, gave it to his wife Karen, who of course has recently been here. Many boat jobs ever occur smoothly and quickly. That was literally only I don't know, two or three minutes. Thanks, James. Getting into Missile after an uneventful day of motor slash sailing. Um, a little bit wet though. Look at that. That is pissing down over there, and we're about to not anchor up, but try and tie up to in between some of these massive cast limestone cliffs. Um, so we're going to give it a crack and if that all fails we've got a backup anchorage to go to. Uh, we'll see if we can get ourselves tied up after the stern. Give it a shot. In Sarong we bought 250 metres of silver rope especially for this type of tyre. Can I tie you? Yep. Like people have used that rock before. We've read about these rocks being so sharp they will literally chafe and cut through rope. Luckily someone previously had put some stainless steel cable and swaged it in place. So don't worry so much about tying it off at the moment. I'm going to lift this rope up to you. Correct. Heavy. Oh, gee, they weren't kidding about the sharp rocks. I think I almost cut myself then. Woke up and we're in Jurassic Park. How beautiful is this bay?
go and explore this beautiful area. Time to limbo. Whoa, duck. <laughs> this place is stunning. Yep, this is the island of Balbalol in North. Come on, Lace, you can do it. Missile? East Missile. Eastern Missile. Northeast. Northeastern Missile. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. And it's like Jurassic Park. And we are, other than a fishing camp, local fishing camp around the corner, beach, uh, we're the only people here, which is pretty typical of uh, this place and this time of year, because it's right on the cusp where the winds start to change. So we're right on the edge. I think this is the prettiest place I've seen since we were on Lord Howe Island. Uh, about a year ago. The water here is actually clearer. I reckon we've got 20 to 30 metres of visibility from that snorkel we did today. And there's more coral. Look at the pot. Thanks. That's not what you meant though, was it? It works on two <laughs> levels. <laughs> Time to do some work and clean the hull, followed by dive. On the next adventure with Look of You, we depart the beautiful Balbalol. I give Denise a dodgy haircut. We're treated to a fever of stingrays and get a visit from some dolphins. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with your friends.